Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, to the Voice of the Eternal Gospel. This is Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to open your word. Thank you for the spirit that inspired the word of God, and we ask for the Holy Spirit to lead us into all the truth, as you have promised, and, and not only in open our hearts to receive the truth and to be submitted to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we're coming today to the closing on the study of the sixth seal. So far, we have seen, just going briefly, since the, we introduced, introduced this uh, portion of Revelation 6, verse 12, that there was a great earthquake that happened, was going to happen during, this, the, during the time of the sixth seal, and that happened in yeah. 1755. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we also saw the uh, dark day and the moon turning like a red as blood. May 19, 1780. We also saw a falling of the stars in uh, 1833, November 13, okay, 1833. And we saw also, we, we studied that since there was a, uh, not only there was an earthquake, physical, <laughs> in the world, but in the religious world, Christianity was like it was like a great awakening. Yes. In all this period, that's how historians and theologians call it, the great awakening of the 18th century. And by the preaching of the first and second angels' messages. Right. And, 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 and then the preaching of the first, yeah, tied up to those messages. Yes, because remember they. And at the end of 1798, which is a time when the papacy had received, a, the papal system had received a deadly wound, the Bible was no longer restricted. And Bible and tract societies were formed. Right, and, and the printer and press. And the printing were, press was given right. because that had came about just prior to that in 1517 and in the 1400s, but also especially in 1517, right. when Luther nailed his 95 theses on the door at Wittenberg protesting against the indulgences of the papal uh, system, uh, like from Tinsel and others, who were selling indulgences or selling forgiveness of sins. Right, right. And uh, this, the, this, this, this is something that is important because we cannot negate history in the area of, especially in Protestantism, mm -hmm. and believe that all of a sudden we, we, everything is, we can just throw it away or they can be changed and we, or we can deny where Luther's positions were and just say that things have changed. Because when we look around real clear, carefully, uh, in certain, certain uh, articles has already been out there, uh, we find that Rome has not changed in certain ways. Of course. Uh, she still believes that her church is supreme and holds supremacy. Right. She believes in the primacy of the Pope. Right. Uh, we believe that the Word of God is the primacy. Amen. We believe Jesus Christ is primacy. Mm. And so how can we sit there and say that uh, we can just go along with this. And not only that, Luther's reform, his 95 theses dealt with several different things mm. and not just a few items. And even though we know that modern evangelicals today have signed on mm. to this uh, unity, right. how can we have this unity without questioning why the, the changes are not coming with the Rome? The changes is coming with those of us who claim to be Protestants. Right, 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 right. And this is something very important as we keep in mind because we are, we are approaching the day of God, the day of God's wrath. It's a progressive event. The great signs that we're reading about, sun, moon, and stars, are all pointing to it. But the sun, moon, and stars also pointed directly to an event that, the, that most of the Christian world at the time of the Millerite history had misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. The sun, moon, and stars are pointing to the day of atonement. Right. If you read the signs, and if and if we had understood the Day of Atonement, there would not have been a mistake of where Jesus or what was going on in 1844. 
but most people had, a, had already interpreted at that time that the sanctuary on earth was the, the sanctuary was the earth to be cleansed by fire. Mm. And this is what people looking at when they took that together and then they put that together with the second coming of Jesus, they said Jesus is coming, he's going to cleanse the earth by fire. Mm. And right. so this is, this is something that we need to understand because when you read Revelation chapter 6, it talks about the next event is the second coming. Amen. Amen. But the second coming is coming after the day of judgment has, has been set, put in place. That's right. Brother Pastor, you were going to say something. Yeah, there's a reason why they made that mistake, and there was a great disappointment, and that was because during the Dark Ages, no one had a Bible. That's right. Um, the, and in the sanctuary, the Bible is represented, can be represented as the bread of life the table, at the table of showbread. And it was there continually, Tamid, and, and the papacy had taken it away. Mm. And at the altar of incense, the fire there was burning continually, Tamid. The papacy had taken that place of prayer away and commanded people to confess their sins to a human priest. Mm. And it's still doing today. It's yeah. still doing it today. Yeah. Going back to what Pastor Barry was talking about. And so, still, I mean, that's why right. when I hear about this unity, I said, but unity in, 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 in the same system. I mean, unity in what? I'm sorry. And, the, uh, so the, and then the, if you shared the light, if you managed to have some manuscripts and shared the light, you were burned at the stake. So the, the ever-burning candlestick was taken away. Mm -hmm. The continual ministry of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary was replaced by a human priesthood. Mm -hmm. And so the people's direction... Uh, was focused on earth. St. Peter's replaced New Jerusalem. And so in 1844, that, that work of recovering the light, restoring the sanctuary to the knowledge of God's people hadn't yet happened. And they thought planet earth was the sanctuary to be cleansed. The reason why I, I brought this up is too because of the fact that, you know, when I read the life of Luther and they read the part where he, how he got converted to, the, to become a reformer, he was walk, he, he, he was restless, and they told him to go to Rome, and there he found Pilate's staircase. Yeah. yeah. And at Pilate's staircase, he began to kiss the steps going up. And as he was kissing the steps, because Luther had now had been here and there translating the Bible, he began to see that it wasn't stair, stair steps that he needed to be kissing. Mm -hmm. But he began to he, but he hears a voice. The just uh, shall uh, live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Sure. So he, this, this flashes across Luther's mind, showing that justification is not by works, right. but work. But you're not. But but true justification will lead to good works. Right. But justification is by faith. But faith in Christ and His righteousness. Amen. And so we're going to find that when we look at this study, when we look at when we look at this, and we understand what's going on. It's important that we understand that the Reformation laid the foundation, the historical aspect of the Reformation, especially why there was a such thing as a Protestant or a Protestant, why there was such things as um, uh, a Luther and his 95 Theses, in spite of the fact that some have said that he made a mistake. Luther didn't make a mistake. Mm, because course. Luther, if, you, if Luther was mistaken in the area of justification, then then the Bible itself is a mistake. And Luther was basing his justification in his teachings on the scriptures. And the scriptures are not a mistake. In fact, it is, it, it is, it is a policy that is taught that the scriptures are not a, a sufficient guide in, in matters of doctrine. But the Bible says of itself, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I mean, I don't think it's, it's a coincidence either that right after, I mean, following that, yes, it's presented the, the, like the coming of Jesus Christ, but then the Bible gives us like a parenthesis. Mm -hmm. And then it, it stops right there between the sixth and the seventh seal. And it comes right on chapter 7 over here, saying, and after these things, what things? The things I have seen mm -hmm. happening during those six seals. Yes. Now, chapter 7, remember, is given because yeah. of a question has been asked in chapter right. 6. That's right. Chapter 6 says, who shall be able to, to stand? stand. That's right. That's right. Now, 
God answers that question in chapter 7. That's right. And then the, the parenthesis in here is to explain who really are going to be taking place at the coming of at Jesus At the coming Christ. of Christ. Uh, after all these signs, seeing all these signs, we should be moved and say, yes, I need to get ready. You know, one of the things that brought me into this truth of the gospel is, it's because of the prophecy. When somebody showed me with the Bible, even still attending, you know, the, the popular church institution, show me all these prophecies, I said, I got no, uh, no other alternative. I said, I need to make a decision because I know that according to the prophecy, Jesus is going to have a, a people, a church, a beautiful church, a church that, yes, will be waiting for his coming, okay, that we will be ready, not only believing, but ready for the coming. And it, that's what the prophecy, as Peter says, will take us right up to the morning star, which is Jesus Christ. And over here, the question is posed on Revelation 6, 17, and the answers come right here in this parenthesis that I call it between the 6th and 7th seal. And what is that the Bible says then on Revelation 7, 7, 1? Can you read it, please? Roger? Well, I just want to mention that we're still in the 6th seal. That's right. We, it hasn't, we haven't it, finished it. It is a parenthesis. It. Um, but there, in the 6th seal is the 7th plague of Revelation where the heavens depart uh -huh. And the islands are moved, and and Christ is coming. Right, and right. So we're in between the falling of the stars and Christ's second coming here in the sixth seal. Right, right. But but the question is asked yeah. on the seventeenth. And so who are going to be ready? Who, are, yeah, who will be ready? And then chapter seven will answer that question. It says, right. it says after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow upon the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. Okay. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of living God. Okay. And he cried to the four angels to whom was given her to earth and the, earth, her to earth and the sea, saying, Her not the earth, neither the sea nor trees, who have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Amen. Revelation 7, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. So there's something that needs to be taking place now, before the plagues will come, before the coming of Christ will come. Right. God is, is, uh, is still knocking on the door, as we read in previous program, Revelation 3, chapter 18, 14 and on, knocking on, on our door, the door of our hearts, our mind, so we can open up the door of our heart, our mind, and we can, instead of follow tradition, follow men, follow Jesus. Yes. Isn't this the purpose of the prophecy? Yes. Of course. So why don't we do, why don't we, when we talk about this, four angels are standing in the four corners of the earth. Oh, you want to say something before yeah. that? Yeah, the four angels are standing, holding back the winds of strife. Holding, holding, holding. We're situated between Revelation 6, 13 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the, the, those we talked about in 1844 who expected Christ to come, mm -hmm. Christ is waiting for, he's in the most holy place now, of the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. he, this is the day of atonement, the hour of God's judgment. Okay, um, this is a very important point. But let's hold it right there. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. My brother Patrick, go ahead. Read the verse that you want to read. Well, you were mentioning the four angels holding. and They've been holding for a long time as Jesus yeah. is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Yeah. Second Peter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, 
but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, mm. the, all, the earth also, and the works thereof that are therein shall be burned up. Mm. And so the, the angels are holding, and the ascending angel that we read about is sealing God's servant in their forehead. Those are the ones that will be able to stand at this when Christ comes. And, and I want to add, even though it has passed over 100 years, 170 mm -hmm. plus years from this movement, but what is 170 plus years or 200 years in comparison with eternity? Right. I mean, it, it, it's like nothing. So, but, but yes, God has been waiting. But how long is he going to wait? Because, well, I think in Revelation 7, when he will have his servant seal. Now, there's a lot of <laughs> clothing to be cut over here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of material, okay? Because John is seen, is been presenting this four angel uh, holding the wings of the earth. What does that mean, the wings uh, of the earth? What, what are they doing? Can we, are there, are there literal wings? Mm -hmm. Or wings of a strife or, or calamities or judgments or what is this? I, I, I would like to go maybe to the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 49, verse 36. 49, Jeremiah. Let's go quickly. Jeremiah 49, 36. Yeah, what, what does it say it, there? It says, and upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of the heaven mm. and will scatter them toward all those winds and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come for I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life and I will bring evil upon them even my fierce anger saith the Lord and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. So winds is a representation of strife or judgments or what else? Going into the simulation of war, strife, and bloodshed. Bloodshed. And, and Daniel 7 2. 7 2. Yeah, that's when the. So we, we can understand a little better yeah. uh, all the symbols. That's when the winds were blowing in Daniel's yes. vision. He said in verse 2 Daniel oh, spake ahead. and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Okay. So, again. God is going to, is holding. We hear about calamities. We hear about war. We hear about uh, uh, violence taking place nowadays. But still God is holding on because there is a purpose for God to hold on the four corners. He wants us to get ready for the coming of Christ. In Revelation uh, 7, 4, that it, well, before I, 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 we go there, it says, uh, what is this angel? And again, in angels, there's four angels. Uh, verse 2, can you read it, please, too? Revelation 7, two. seven yeah. verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending right. from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Don't hurt, the, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay, so that, that, that is, uh, again, a, a work of uh, uh, God giving us time to come right with Him, to come to the knowledge of the everlasting gospel, right? Be, be, mm -hmm. Because during the dark age, what happened with the true gospel? What has happened with the gospel? What happened? Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the oh. true everlasting gospel has been preached throughout mm -hmm. the nation? To the dark ages? No. It, it was just no. very few people hiding in caves, huh? in, 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 in little uh, Martin, corners of the yeah. earth, in mountains. Yeah, and then until Martin Luther was recovering the gospel right. in 1517. So God brings these angels, and an angel is a, a, a symbol also of what? Well, the word angel means messenger. Right. And in the book of Revelation, an angel can represent a movement of people giving. Right giving a gospel message. You know, when I read over here in verse 2, I saw another angel ascending from the east. This angel, uh, according to 
the word of Jesus in Matthew, the word in Luke also. Yeah. It talks about that Jesus will come, you know, it, it will come from the east. So this this messenger are going to be bringing a message of the advent of Christ. Christ's coming is likened unto um, lightning. the lightning that shines from the east to, to the, the west. west. Yeah. Can I say that in Revelation chapter 7, when you're looking at the angel coming from the east, the east is very significant because of the location. First of all, the great message of uh, the Great Awakening actually came out the eastern parts of the United States. The message right. itself, the angel is represented by a messenger, and therefore, and he has with him a message. It is the gospel message. Mm -hmm. It's the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14, 6, when it says, mm -hmm. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them and dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, the message that the angel brings is, Fear God and give glory to him for the what? Hour of his judgment is come. Mm -hmm. But now this message is coming from the east. The east is the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not say, it not, so as the message comes, the message begins to rise as the sun rises. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Malachi 4.2, But unto you that fear my name, shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Mm -hmm. So this message is a message of righteousness that's coming from the east. But what is this message that's coming from the east as a message of righteousness? Mm -hmm. First of all, it's a message of righteousness by faith. Amen. The same message that Luther and them taught during the time of the Reformation. The just Amen. shall live by faith. So righteousness by faith is the message, but righteousness by faith is a message coming through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the everlasting righteousness by faith is the three angels' messages in verity as we understand the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of, or a message of righteousness. Mm. No wonder in the book of Daniel, in chapter 11, and I know we start studying the book of Revelation, but those two books, as we know, go hands to hands. Mm -hmm. I want you to go, Brother Patrick, on Daniel 11, verse 44. And I'm going to, after you read the verse, I'm going to ask you a question. And but, you can, uh, um, oh, please, uh, 1144, Daniel, read it. In but, relationship with the east, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But tidings out of the east uh -huh. and out of the north shall trouble him. Okay, who is this him in Daniel we studied this in other programs him is a long time ago. The king of the north, which is a symbol of the papacy in okay. Daniel 11. So it says over here, Daniel saw that news, tidings, or messages coming from the east. This message of righteousness, message of the three angels' messages, messages of the second coming of Christ. It says over here, will trouble. Can we, I mean... Let's face it, who are, and, and, and I say this in a very humble way, um, you know, but there's only one group of people preaching these messages out openly around the world, the three angels' messages. I have been in country where I have been having priests, uh, evangelical pastor in my meetings telling me, you know, we never even came across these messages. We never even were confronted in our seminaries about these messages, about the three angels' messages. Why? Because there is a group of people, the people that pay attention to the prophecy of the judgment hour, of the 2300 days, or the, the movement, it's a movement. God raised up the movement, it's preaching throughout the earth in different languages, different tongues, because the same way that the, the deceptions, traditions have been going Around all the nations, God needs to bring His everlasting gospel to every nation before the close of probation. That is absolutely true because <laughs> of the, the issues that we see taking place. Why is that important? Notice the angel from the east has a message. The message is a threefold message. Uh -huh. All right? Maybe so, you're looking for this? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Because <laughs> looking the message is a last, God's last warning to the world. Right, man. And that message is going to be seen in this particular. Uh, Literature, literature, study. Yeah. Free literature that people can receive called Earth's Final Warning. Yeah. We are offering free of charge also Earth's for Earth Final Warnings. And this contains, you know, in, of course, in, in, in a format of a newspaper because most people don't like to read books. They say that they don't have time. So we put it in the format of a newspaper. It, it, they have a, we have a picture over here of the second coming of Christ. 
we have also a, a whole study talking about liberty of conscience threatening when we make taking the Bible and the Bible alone that chaos and natural disasters are coming upon the earth a national Sunday law will be the mark of the beast and I know these are a study that are not even political correct I know the majority of the people over there don't have a clue of what is about to take place on this earth by the way on this publication we are offering a thousand dollar I don't know if you will, <laughs> if you'll be able to get it a thousand dollar for anyone who can find just one Bible verse just one Bible verse that will tell us that the, uh, that the sanctity of Saturday has been transferred to Sunday institution to, 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 to the Sunday but the reason that we bring this is this message is troubling I know that the popular churches, it's trouble. The Bible predicted already, especially to the most popular organization, religious organization. But, but there are a lot of, Jesus said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. Right, amen. And my sheep hear my voice. Amen. The voice is the word of God. Amen. Today, people are listening to, watching a lot of entertainment. Mm. They're being entertained by different things and music and, and, dan and dances and praises and everything else, which have their place mm. but at the same time we find that it's the Word of God that many people are hunger for Amen. we found out already from our study that in the last days there'll be a famine in the land mm. not a famine of bread nor thirst for water but for hearing the word of the Lord mm. Jesus said blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness Amen. the Bible says all God's commandments are righteousness Amen. the Bible also says that the scriptures give instruction in righteousness Amen. and so we're gonna find then that there are people who are hungry and thirsting and who want the Word of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. The Word of God is His voice, the Word of God. My sheep hear my voice, my sheep hear my righteousness. Amen. And there will be clergy, uh, ministers, lay people that the same way that when this movement started back in the 18th century, are going to wake up and they will unite. And then the, Jesus is going to have a people, the 144,000, that's the topic that I want to pick up in the next program. The 144,000 with a, a great multitude getting ready to be translated to heaven. In the meantime, may the Lord bless each one of us. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.